Hey guys, it's me, Bad Grush, and thanks for clicking on my gaming computer build video. I know there's lots of them to choose from, but I want to say thanks for clicking mine. The prices of my PC builds for this month are $400, $500, $600, $800, and $1,000. This is my $600 rig that let get into the world of PC gaming. Even if it's for a gift or a personal computer, I can say without a doubt this is going to be the best possible moderate PC build that I can make at this price point, and it'll let you play just about any game you throw at it at really decent settings. This PC is $600, so you can be expecting to max out some newer games like Shadow of Mordor at 1080p on it. It's a pretty powerful rig, so newer games like Civilization Beyond Earth, Dragon Age Inquisition, and Far Cry 4 can be run on Ultra at 1920x1080p with at least 30 frames per second. It even runs Crisis 3 on Ultra at over 30 frames per second, so the graphics card is actually really good. Computers, as per nature, are made to be upgradable, so even if you start up with this, you can always add more and better parts as time passes. I tried as hard as I could to get it to be a decent setup, and I think I did pretty well on it, so without further ado, I'll get started listing the parts. For a processor, I chose the AMD FX6300. It's a hexacore processor, it's clocked at 3.5GHz, and it's really easy to overclock. More games in the future are actually starting to use extra cores, and if you do any video editing, it's also made much faster, so this is a pretty good processor to get started with. The FX6300 will run you about $100. For the motherboard, I chose the ASRock 960GM U3 S3 FX. This board's pretty great because it supports overclocking with the 1600, has 4 USB 2 ports, 2 USB 3 ports, and a bunch of other extras that are for about $50. Memory, as always, is never really a hard component to go with, so I just went with an 8GB stick of G-Skill Ripjaws X-Series DDR3 RAM. I picked this memory a lot, but I've always used it, and I've never had any issues. You can always pick a cheaper version of memory, but I just stick with what I know. 8GB is plenty for your games and multitasking, and 16GB of RAM is kinda overkill, but it's also possible to upgrade to if you really want to pay some more money. The price for this stick of RAM is about $70. Hard drives are also pretty simple components to pick, as they usually stay the same. As always, I'm just gonna stick with a 1TB Western Digital Caviar Blue. Caviar Blue has been a really reliable hard drive for me, and a terabyte is plenty of space for your games, movies, and media. It's a good fit for anything you need to store. Now there's a small difference when you're choosing either a Caviar Blue and a Caviar Black, and the Caviar Black runs about $20 more. Unless you find a good deal for the Caviar Black and you really want that small pump at speed, you can pick that, but if you're just going with a normal price, the Caviar Blue comes in around $60, and that's the one that you probably should pick. Next up is the power supply, and as always, in my opinion, it's the most important part of any computer build, mainly because you need power to run your system. As I always say, never be cheap when you're picking out a power supply, because poorly made PSUs can short out and they will catch your PC on fire, so make sure you pick a quality supply over a good sale price. My recommendation is the Corsair 500 watt power supply. 500 watts is plenty for this build, and it can still be used if you upgrade your build on in the future. It's 80 plus bronze certified, which means it's a high quality power supply. It can actually help you lower your power bill. It's also modular, which means you can take out any cables that you don't need. If you plan on upgrading your graphics card in the future though, it will end up taking more power, but this PSU should still be able to run what you need. You can get it for around $60. As time passes, optical drives and PCs are becoming more and more outdated, unless you want a Blu-ray drive and you use CDs often. I've been using my PC for years, and I've only used the optical drives a couple times, once to install the operating system, and to burn about two CDs. I, as always, am just going with a cheap yet reliable reader and burner, which is a Samsung. It's a simple basic drive, and I have to put it in just in case you actually install the operating system with a CD. It'll run you about $15. Finally is the case, and once again, this is where your own opinion and your cheapness comes in. Cases can be up in the hundreds of dollars, so to keep this build moderately cheaper, but still have a good bit of extras, I with the Cougar Spike. It's a small quality case, it has a clean, simple style, and it holds everything together with some decent airflow. I use this case with my LAN rig, and I've never had any issues with it. It's your build, you can do whatever you want when you're picking out a case. If you just want a cheap, reliable one that I've been using for a while, you can get this case for about $40. Well, that's it guys, this is my guide for a quality $600 gaming PC that should last for quite some time before it becomes outdated. As always, prices of computer components can and will change often, and just while making this set of videos, the price has gone both over and under the price point several times, so I'll be leaving a link in the description to PCPartMaker.com. This is a website that I use, and many others use, to plan out their computer builds online and see the lowest prices from the components that they need. Well, that's it for this video, guys, so if you like this video and you want to see some more of them, click the like button. I have four of the builds available for you guys to look at this month. One for 400, 
500, 800, and a thousand dollar PC. Click the links in the video when they're available if you want to see one of them. And if you enjoy my videos, you can click here to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. It shows me that you want to see some more videos. I hope to see you guys in the next video, which should be coming out soon.